crowd, eh? People tell you, you better be funny when you come to Liverpool, everybody's a comedian. I, I just, that's, that, that's long ago as well, this is a tame story now compared to that, that very funny guy he is. But I was with my daughter in, we got up to get the tour, you know, and the guy was going this building, that building, and all of a sudden he went off script, you know, and he says, Holland is uh, three metres below sea level, uh, for us Dutch this is not a problem, for you maybe. Uh, this sounds like it was Welsh, was it? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there are two things you learn how to do in Holland when you're a kid. One is to ride a bike and the other is to swim. <laughs> uh, I found that funny anyway. <laughs> so, uh, I got on a bus in Liverpool and um, the driver, he's bald and he had silver curls on the side. And uh, I said, how's life, mate? He goes, rubbish. He says, I had a big head of brown curls and I started driving this bus for 43 years. You know? <laughs> People don't normally tell you what, you know, the true story, like, you know what I mean? But uh, last week, uh, this guy, he's coming up to retirement, a uh, guy I work with, and he's going to retire in Cyprus, you know. And so he's telling us about it and anything else. And he said, you know, it's very English. I said, no, really, I didn't know that. He says, yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, there's a little on every corner. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but I was, I was driving this, behind this van on Friday, and it said, it was like one of these butchers, delicatessen vans, you know, and it said, uh, there are no pies left in this town overnight. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen no tools and no skills, but I've never seen no pies, man. You need to be very special to, to break in for pies, wouldn't you? But I've seen this programme during the week, I don't know if you've seen it, uh, and it was in Bramhall. About 20 or 30 peacocks were, were loose, you know, and they're kind of going self catering around that area, you know what I mean, and making it very unpleasant for the, for the locals. And so they interviewed this woman. They, they reckon the Romans, did, nobody knows, knows where they came from, but they said the Romans introduced them and so whatever, whenever they came. So they, they interviewed this woman anyway, and she said one of them got into her kitchen and um, it spread his wings, you know, and uh, she, it broke a few things. She, she touched each thing, it broke, like, like she was living, reliving a moment of intense pain, you know. It was a nightmare, it was a nightmare. So uh, God forbid she'd ever have to move up to where I live, in, in Moston, in the North Manchester, man. Her idea of a nightmare might change a little. Uh, I moved there in 2004, and when I moved there, there was about four or five hundred houses boarded up, and every drug addict in North Manchester is squatting up there, you know. And I got broken into about five times, and one of those times there was only a alarm there, and they talked that like. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was, I had this Iranian friend, he reckoned the area was improving because he didn't have to clean as much blood off the front of his shop at that for the weekend. <laughs> and there was this pub, and um, oh man, people, terriers, slopping up lower ground, they find glasses in one corner. And, Honestly, there's one guy staring at all pine glass with no front teeth here. Another guy talking to the ceiling. I thought, oh God, what am I doing? So I said this young lad next to me, oh, a band started playing. And I said this young lad next to me, I said, uh, he's all right here, isn't he? And the kid says, oh, he's rubbish, man. He's been coming here the last five years singing the same songs. I'm sick of him, you know? So when the guy took a break and um, I said, hey, mate, is that right? You've been coming here singing the same songs for the last five years. He says, no, no, he says, more than that, it's about seven years, he says. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, what's going to say? Uh, no, the last time I told the story, like from New Zealand, these, this couple came to live in Dublin. I told this story, and this woman came up to me, it was in Dublin, and she started telling me how bad the Irish banking system was. There's even ten years behind the Russian system, you know. I said, don't take it personally, you know what I mean? But, uh, they came, they came to, no, maybe, maybe I might believe that one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, yeah, must have. Yeah, I used to go in this Jamaican bar in Leamington Spa, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, But I hadn't been in there for a while, and I looked around, and I said, uh, I was looking for a guy, he's no called uh, Nolly. And uh, has anyone seen Nolly lately? I said. And then the voice came, um, Nolly dead, man! Because <laughs> you'll not break it to you gently, like, you know what I mean? He uh, doesn't like, oh, sorry, haven't you heard? Well, Nolly passed away, you know? Nolly dead, man! And then, so. <laughs> So I'm standing there, and it's kind of a shock of Nolly dying, and um, you know the abrupt manner I was uh, informed. So I stood there like a goat in a snowstorm for a few seconds, and um, I said, "But Nolly wasn't old, was he?" He says, "You don't have to be old to die, you know, man." <laughs> <laughs> I was like him for another hour, like, <laughs> "Nolly dead, man, go." <laughs> but uh, d d where are the North Northern Ireland from? Yuri. Oh, Yuri. Yuri, turn it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a pop-out okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a further north, yeah. But, hey, uh, do you know Kevin Bridges? The, uh, sorry, Kevin McAleer, the Yeah, hell yeah. He's getting on now, he's about 60. But he was, he was, he was telling a story about how, um, you know, he, he started out comedy 40 years ago. And nobody was going around the world that time, da-da-da. So he was telling his dad, he, he went around the world, he's seen the Taj Mahal, 
He's seen New York. He walks across the Golden Gate Bridge, and he's telling he's, he's telling he's telling his dad all this. When he come home, and he says, "Hey, and uh, how'd you get home, son?" He says, um, uh, "Playing the Dublin, I got the bus stop." And his father said, "Was the money on the bus, uh, son?" <laughs> Didn't want to know by the time I don't think I think I screwed that up there somewhere. <laughs> but your mates, I tell you, mates, like I tell you, you know, all you gotta do is be around your mates for a while. I I uh, I was moving over and back. I was in LA for a while, and um, I, I was back visiting my mates. He used to live in Edmonton Spa, and uh, we're not with seven eight mates. Uh, I used to have mates that time, but uh, but we're staying well anyway. And uh, five minutes after getting into the bar, um, one of the lads said, "Paul said, Brian, you have an F eight mate." You know, I was forty five at the time. He says, you look at least 10 years older than you are. And, uh, oh, great. He said, here you are, mate. If you don't believe it, just ask a total stranger. So they turned to a guy who was 62 years old. He'd never wrinkled his face and jet black hair from London. He says, how old do you think he looks? Oh, mid-50s, you know. So that was 10 years older. And he says, well, what do you think makes him look so old? He says, oh, it's the wrinkles around his eyes, you know. And uh, I, I said, uh, that's just um, years of laughing, mate. And Paul goes, nothing's that funny, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he could, yeah, man, when I used to have a moustache, one of my mates used to tell me it looked like an apple with a moustache, you know. <laughs> and, uh, but there was the, um, there was one, I don't know if you got time for it, this one, there's two lads I used to share a flat with. James was from Donegal, and, and Dave was from, from India. And um, Dave was such a cute little guy, you know. And it, everything was too much hot, too much cold, too much tired, you know. I came in one. There were a lot. Of, there were a lot of medication these lads, you know. Uh, Dave has got uh, found walking around the middle of Dublin in flip flops and shorts in the middle of Marats one time, you know. And they took him to a mental institution, you know. And we were telling him he was all right, you know. <laughs> and uh, he was lovely. Man. But I came in one night, and um, he says, Brian, Brian, can you do me a favour? I says, Yeah, Davis, what? He says, Can you put three thousand pound in my account, please? <laughs> I said, No, no, Davis, I can't, you know. And so they went, he was mad as these Bollywood movies, you know, and there was no random rhythm to some of these things, you know what I mean? And um, anyway, th this one movie, you, you see all these generals, they're shouting and roaring at each other like they were overdosed and expressed, you know? And, uh, and you can only make out one word out of every sentence, like, nuclear power! Pakistan! You know what I mean? And this woman coming down the stairs, and she's got a tray of glasses, you know, and the glasses, she start rattling on, on the tray, you know? And because uh, she's heard something she shouldn't have heard, like, and then she shouts something up, and then she back up the stairs, and then then you get to see a dancers, you know, you get these, and you always get this one guy, he's got leather trousers on, always impeccable, but he's thrown out of an airplane or under a, <laughs> under a train, he loves us to say, you know, and um, he's dancing there for five minutes, and you're thinking, where's the woman gone, you know, and the next thing she shows up in this de in this forest, and they're shooting at her, and. Robin Hood comes down and he's shooting the army and he picks her up and throws her over one shoulder, you know what I mean? And uh, James, James had been quiet there all, all the time and right after that last scene he turned to Davis and said, Davis, is this a true story? <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks very much, thanks. Sorry.